the 2024 election is just under 900 days away. Get excited. Get excited. Donald Trump is reportedly itching to announce his 2024 presidential campaign, as CNN's Gabby Orr reported in late May. Over the past few weeks, the former president has been chatting up friends and advisors about the looming 2024 presidential contest, including taking their temperature, cool, on an earlier than expected campaign announcement, end quote. Now, every single bit of evidence that reporting by Gabby included suggests that another Trump presidential bid is a when, not if, question. I would say somewhere between 99 and 100 uh, percent. I think he's definitely running in 2024. And then this spring, Trump himself was pretty blunt about his interests in another bid. Quote, we've already won two presidential elections, Trump told a group of Republican donors in New Orleans. Fact check, he won the one presidential election in 2016. He lost the 2020 election. Anyway, Trump went on to say, and now I feel obligated that we have to look, really look strongly at doing it again. We are looking at it very, very strongly. We have to do it. We have to do it. Given that Trump could be an announced 2024 candidate by the end of the summer, when I met you in the summer, I thought it made sense to offer up my inaugural rankings of the 2024 Republican presidential field right about now. Below, I'm going to go through the 10 people most likely to win the Republican nomination as of today. Now, if you do not see your favorite on the list, don't fret. We're still a long way out from the 2024 election. Remember, almost 900 days. All right, let's start with number 10, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Cotton represents a sort of muscular conservatism that I think very much would appeal to Trump voters if the former president is in the race. And Cotton's already been a frequent visitor of the expected early voting states like Iowa and New Hampshire. Number nine, Florida Senator Rick Scott. First, people said that Scott couldn't win the governorship. He served two terms in that job. Then they said he couldn't get elected to the U.S. Senate. He knocked off longtime Democratic Senator Bill Nelson to do just that in 2018. Scott's ambitions are clearly national in scope. His decision to release a policy agenda that he wants to implement if Republicans retake control of the Senate in 2023 is proof of that. Number eight, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. So two things are true about the Virginia governor. One, he was just elected to his first public office in 2021. And two, he is term limited out of that job in 2025. And that second point means that Youngkin necessarily is already keeping one eye on his future. For me, I tend to think Youngkin is more VP material in the end, but the success and notoriety derived from his 2021 campaign means he can't be ignored if he does decide to go for the top job. Number seven, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. While Florida Governor Ron DeSantis gets the most 2024 buzz among the Republican state executives, more on that in a minute, Abbott has effectively used his own perch as the top elected official in Texas to position himself for a presidential race as well. Number six, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. So you can count on one hand, here's a hand, the number of high profile Trump appointees who left the Trump administration on good terms with the former president. Haley is really, honestly, only one of them. She's done a fantastic job and we've done a fantastic job together. We've solved a lot of problems and we're in the process of solving a lot of problems. Number five, Texas Senator, Ted Cruz. Don't forget that the Texas senator was the runner up to Trump in the 2016 presidential race and that after a rocky relationship with Trump during the fall of 2016, Cruz has gone out of his way to make nice with the man who never forget suggested his father might have been involved in the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Yeah, that happened. Number four, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. So Tim Scott is on record as saying he would back a Trump 2024 campaign. But in a Trump-less field, Scott is deeply intriguing. He's the first black senator elected from the Deep South since Reconstruction and the first black Republican to serve in the Senate since 1979. If Republicans decide they need a new face to lead their party, Scott has to be at the front of that line. Number three, former Vice President Mike Pence. On the one hand, Pence has been disowned by Trump and the former president's loyalists for refusing to overturn the 2020 Electoral College results. On the other hand, Pence has tons of residual name identification from his four years as vice president and retains a solid base of support among religious conservatives. So, which hand is right? Number two, Florida Governor 
Ron DeSantis. There's a clear gap between the Florida governor and the rest of the Republican field not named Donald Trump. Now that said, DeSantis can't take his eye off the ball because he's running for a second term this fall. He is a favorite, but still. He has to date, without question though, very effectively used his day job as a way to boost his national profile. And at number one, former president Donald Trump. Don't act surprised. Look, if you want to find cracks in the Trump Foundation, you can do it. His endorsed candidates in governor's races in places like Georgia, Nebraska, and Idaho all lost primaries, sometimes convincingly, earlier this year. But that would miss the forest for the trees. That was me running through the forest. The simple fact is that Trump remains the prime mover in Republican Party politics. If he runs, and I absolutely believe he's going to, he starts in a top tier all his own. The nomination is quite clearly his to lose, which doesn't mean he can't lose it. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.